Do not lower your standard of integrity when pressured to do so. Your responsibility may involve you to take unpopular stands. Do not let the desire to be sociable or the fear of seeming peculiar determine your decisions. Folks, in this video we're going to open a can of the Mountain House scrambled eggs with bacon and then we're going to cook them up and try them out. And we'll get right into that right after the uh, channel intro. ultimately responsible for protecting yourself and your own survival. Make sure to live your life with honor and integrity. Never take joy in another person's misfortunes. Always be the wolf hunter. Don't be the sheep and never be the wolf. Folks, if you're not familiar with freeze-dried foods, then getting number 10 cans of it may be something that you may want to consider for your long-term food storage with your food preps is this will allow you to add different stews and soups and lasagnas and other items that could really add some variety to your food preps. And if SHTF ever happens and if you have to actually go to eating your food preps, you'll probably quickly find that the same old rice and beans and your other dried goods for long term food storage will probably get uh, quickly get boring. Now, the downside to freeze-dry food is that they're usually pretty expensive. They can average between $30 to $40 per number 10 can. And a can will sometimes only feed one person for one day or maybe a day and a half. So this can average to about <clears throat> $9 per meal, which is a lot more expensive than the beans and rice and the dried corn and the other dried goods that should be in your food preps. Another downside to them is that I don't think that they're healthy enough for you to eat as your primary food source. They can be high in sodium and in whatever else that may be detrimental for you to eat for breakfast and lunch and dinner for months or years straight. However, an upside is that they're supposed to last for about 30 years if stored in a cool, dry place. And the real upside to them is that they can add flavor and variety to your dry goods that you will probably quickly uh, find to become very, very boring. Uh, now, I scored about eight cases of different varieties of Mountain House uh, foods a couple of years ago. And I was only able to get that much because they were on an, an extreme sale. Otherwise, I'd never been able to afford that many. But I figure that with my family of three, if we're lucky enough to be able to sustain ourselves off of a 2,000 calorie a day diet, should SHTF happen, that I have a variety, enough of a variety of mountain houses to last my family for just about a month. And, and that's if we were purely eating only that. But, uh, uh, but we wouldn't uh, purely eat those unless we were forced to do so. Uh, what we, we would be mixing this freeze-dried food in with our other food preps, uh, and this to do, and this would be to extend our long, long-term food uh, food preps that we uh, that every prepper should already have. So if SHTF were to ever happen, and you were forced to start eating your food preps. A good idea to mix these uh, Mountain House food preps with your dry good preps would be, you know, you can add a little bit of beef stew over the rice and beans to give them a little bit of flavor, or you could add your dried corn to the soup to thicken it up, and or also pouring uh, the soup over the rice. Now, but, you know, and real quick, again, along with adding flavor to the rice and beans, doing this would extend both the dried, your dried foods, and then also the mountain house foods. Um, now, for special occasions such as someone's birthday or a holiday, I would probably prepare the most liked or the most enjoyed mountain house food by itself. Um, this would be this would be done just so that it would be a special meal and, and just to get away from the day-to-day -day foods that you would be having to eat every day over and over again during SHTF. But I like to mix each case up with uh, different varieties of food. This is done uh, just, just 
just to help keep a variety of different foods should I should I lose you know one or more cases of the mountain house food for whatever reason and for inventory reasons uh, because every prepper should regularly inventory and check out their food preps um, I like to write on the outside of the box what each case contains in the calorie count for that case this just makes inventory just so much easier but anyways folks let's get to actually opening up the uh, the can of the uh, eggs and cooking it and tasting it okay today we are going to test out this uh, mountain house scrambled eggs with uh, bacon number 10, uh, number 10 sized can if you've never had mountain house before it's pretty good now one thing I found about pretty much all of these freeze-dried foods <clears throat> As you can see this says it has it's 190 calories per serving and there's and they say there's 16 uh, servings per container now what I have found is that you want to go by the calorie counts by the can and not by the amount of servings that they say is in one of these uh, containers um, at only 190 calories per serving that's not very much um, this whole can, if I did my math right, this whole can is only going to contain a little bit over 3,000 calories. So this wouldn't even feed one person. If this was all these, if this was all the person had to eat, this can would not even feed one person um, for two days. It'd feed them a little bit over one day if they were going a 2,000 calorie per day diet and they weren't doing extra hard labor where they even needed more calories than that. If a person was eating this for breakfast only and eating other foods for lunch and dinner, but eating this can for breakfast only, this would last him probably about four days, my guess. Now, for my family of three, this would not even last me, this one can would not even last me for uh, two days to have breakfast for my family of three. A whole case of these, when you buy it, if you buy a whole case, there's six cans that come to a case, and if you mix them up with breakfast foods and, and dinner foods, <clears throat> you will find usually that a case will average about 13,000 calories um, for a whole case of those. And 13,000 calories, that's going to feed what, a family of three for two days? So a whole case of these, six of these uh, cans in a case will feed a family of three for, if I did my math right, for, uh, for just only two days. So with the cost of these things, uh, again, they're really expensive. You know, these these are something that's just going to add a little bit of variety. These will not be the main staple of, uh, this, this is not my main uh, staple for long-term food stories. This is, again, just for some variety to add just a little bit something different to help my dried goods extend extend them further and for my dried goods to also extend these further maybe even special occasions too all right let's open these up Well, I didn't hear much of a uh, vacuum on when I opened it up, but it might have just been because the uh, metal clanking might have. There it goes. I heard it there. That's a good sound when you hear that uh, vacuum going. Now let's take a look at what they look like inside. Look like. Uh, big chunks of uh, freeze-dried eggs I'm guessing all the bacon bits of bacon bits have probably have worked their way down to the bottom here's the vacuum pack that's inside here I bet if we leave this out this will probably start getting warm again all right so the directions say <clears throat> basically you get eight cups of water boiling uh, you mix the contents <clears throat> you uh, add the boiling water to the uh, to the contents let it set to uh, stir it up let it set for five or six six minutes draining ex water excess water that you have and then uh, then serve so we will give it a try all right well that is while that water is boiling we will 
get this dumped into a skillet so that we can add this eight ounces of water and uh, make sure we get it mixed up. Just as I thought, all the um, all the bacon bits are on the bottom. See if I can zoom up so you can get a better look at that. Okay, now the directions say to bring eight cups of boiling water or water to a boil. So we will add our, uh, that's my eighth cup of water added there. We will let that sit until it gets, uh, until it gets uh, boiling. I did go ahead and transfer it to a larger uh, skillet because uh, it was more in that uh, can than what I thought there was going to be. And I'll zoom up here again so you can get a little bit better look at it. And once the uh, water comes to a boil, we will uh, Add it in. Now, I'm only going to cook about half the can. Uh, when I poured it all in here, it just looked like it was going to be too much to try to cook up at once. So I'm only, I, I knocked it down to half a can. And here again, you can just kind of see what it looks like. All right, the water is boiling good now, we'll, so we'll add the water. Okay, so the directions say to add the boiling water to it. Definitely glad I decided to go with half a can now. That would have ended up everywhere. And now we're going to simply just kind of mix it up, make sure all the <clears throat> parts and pieces get wet. Okay, now the directions say that you cover it and let it stand for five to six minutes. So I don't have anything, uh, the only thing I got big enough to cover this is this old pizza pan, so. All right, we'll cover this, let it sit for uh, five to six minutes. Okay, so the timer has went off saying it's been six minutes now, so let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it definitely looks a little bit watery. You can kind of see the uh, water there. It looks kind of soupy. But let's give it a quick ta test, taste. Uh, now like this piece here, I can feel it's pretty crunchy. I mean, it's still, it's not soft like scrambled eggs should be. Well, let's give it, uh, let's go ahead and give it a taste though. Maybe never went too bright. Tastes good, but it's still very, um, it's not very soft. It's not, uh, it's not soft like, um, like actual scrambled eggs would be. So I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to turn the heat back on and I'm going to cook it longer. And we'll see what happens once we, uh, once we actually cook it longer beyond. And so we're going to give it more heat and Instead of letting it sit, we're gonna add the heat to the water and, and see if that if we can cook this uh, cook it down where it's more fluffy, like scrambled eggs should be. And we'll be back. Okay, we've got it simmering. We're just gonna keep mixing it. And simmering it like this until we see either almost all the water gone or we start seeing if they start looking uh, soft and fluffy um, then I will simply drain the excess water that way and we'll be back okay kind of what I did here was I let it 
set and simmer for about 10 more minutes beyond what the direction said. And most of the water has cooked away during that 10 minutes. And uh, you know what, I let it set and simmer. I would occasionally stir it to make sure everything was keep it, uh, mixed up. So what I have found so far is that if you add the boiling water, like the directions say, and you just let it sit for about six minutes, you will still end up with some pretty um, hard eggs. So what I had to do, again, was I had to, and, you, and it still had a lot of water left in it. So what I had to do was just keep heat uh, added to it and just basically cook all that remaining water away. <clears throat> and uh, it looks like it's soft now. Um, I've tested it out with the spatula and it seems to be soft. Some of these pieces kind of look like, I don't know how to describe it. They almost look like a wet crouton in there, but they don't have the consistency, but they just kind of look like that. Well, we will give it a taste test. And we'll see how it turned out. Oh, hot. And still actually could use another minute or so of cooking. So we'll cook it for another minute and come back. All right, we've let it cook for about another minute, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shut off the heat. And we will give it a try. Let's make sure this is picking it up. And let's go ahead and give it a taste test. Well, it has a very good, <clears throat> I like the flavor. I think it tastes very good. Um, the consistency looks weird as soon as you're done cooking it. Again, you gotta cook it a lot longer than what the directions say. So if this was an SHTF situation, it'd be taking extra extra fuel, extra wood, whatever, however you were going to be cooking it. The consistency, <clears throat> the taste of it is pretty good. The consistency inside as you're eating it is fine. It's just got a weird looking consistency. So while it looks weird, it doesn't taste weird, it doesn't feel weird. It tastes very good. If this were a SHTF situation and you were not able to run to the store to buy eggs and if you didn't have chickens uh, to make your own eggs or if your chickens got killed or something like that, I think that uh, in an SHTF situation you would be eating like a king here. I have had eggs at restaurants or especially eggs out of cafeteria uh, that did not taste as good as this. So this, these aren't the best eggs I've ever had, but they are pretty good eggs. I'm not going to complain about them. Nope. Excuse me. Sounds like somebody's at the door. Well, now since that uh, <clears throat> interruption's over with, again, if this was a SHTF situation and I could not go to the grocery store to get eggs, I didn't have chickens. Um, I, I would, in an SHTF situation, you would be eating like kings. Um, while they, this may not taste as good as eggs that you might scramble and add sauteed vegetables or whatever uh, that you might scramble at home, while they may not taste that good, they are pretty darn good. And I also found too, um, in the past, in the ones I've had in the past, they are pretty filling. So to recap this video, this Mountain House scrambled eggs with bacon was pretty darn good. The bacon really added a smoky flavor to the eggs. This would definitely be something that would be welcomed during SHTF. Now they did take quite a bit longer to prepare than what the directions stated. If you ever cook them, you'll probably have to keep the heat on them until the excess water finishes cooking away. 
While these aren't as tasty as freshly made homemade scrambled eggs, if SHTF were to ever happen, you would be like you would be eating like a king with these. But since I've already got eight cases and enough other dried goods to feed my family for over a year, I will focus on getting other preps built up first, but I definitely have plans of adding more of these freeze-dried foods to my food preps in the future. And last but not least, the smell of cooking foods like this will probably travel a greater distance than what we would think they would during SHTF. But that's a whole different topic and a whole different video on noise and light and smell and odor disciplines that I'll be doing in the future. Folks, if you found this video to be informative, then please like the video and comment with your thoughts below. And if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.